Hey everyone, this is Jeff at with Learning Dojo, and welcome to the first video in this series. And this series is basically how to create, you know, just default websites, HTML, how to get started with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you want to check out more videos, go ahead and go to my website at learningdojo.net, and you can check out a lot of different videos, a lot of YouTube videos as well. You can follow me on Twitter at jeffbat01. So just check out different tutorials as I post them here. But really, I wanted to uh, go through and show someone who's just starting with web development how to get started with the different files, how to work with HTML, how to work with CSS, how to work with JavaScript, what it is, and how you can start building these websites. So if you're new to web development, this is a great starting point. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started here by just creating a default website. And I'm going to use a text editor called Sublime Text. Sublime Text, you can get a free version of it. It is just a, a simple text editor itself. One of the useful things about it is the fact that it gives you code hints. As a web developer, I don't have everything memorized. I don't remember exactly every single tag or anything like that. So Sublime will actually uh, give you the code hints and all you have to do is hit enter and it will fill out the code for you, at least part of it, and then you have to just change it from there. And so it is a great tool. It's one of my favorite tools for building websites and you can go in and download it for free there. Now, when I'm building a website, the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a folder because each website has several different files. It has HTML files, it has CSS files, it has JavaScript files as well. So you want to make sure that everything is actually contained inside of this one folder. So on my desktop, I'm going to go ahead and right click and go to new folder. Now I'm going to name this folder here and I'm going to name this folder to be just web page here or website. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and do that there. Now, you could place all of the files inside of this folder. You could place all the HTML files, CSS files, images, and everything like that. However, it shows that you're not really organized with your web development. I know I interviewed somebody that's uh, for a web developer position, and when they developed a test site, I essentially saw all their files not inside of any folders, like the images were not inside of an images folder. The CSS was, you know, in the parents, the, the main area of this folder as well. So to me, that was just like, okay, well, if they can't even organize it a little bit better, then they're not the right person for this position. People can get picky with that. Just if, if you're just starting out, just keep that in mind. I usually like to keep my CSS files inside of a CSS folder. I also like to keep my JavaScript files inside of a JS folder, which stands for JavaScript. And I also like to keep my images inside of either an images folder or a media folder. I like to start those out to begin with, just so I make sure that all of those folders in, are inside of there. Now, coming back into Sublime, I'm just going to go ahead and go File and then go, go down to Save. And I'm going to save this uh, file, this HTML file to begin with. Now, I'm going to save it inside of the website folder. I'm not going to place it inside of any subfolder here. But I'm going to go ahead and give this a name of index.html. You have to make sure that you type in .html. If you were creating a CSS file, you would go ahead and create CSS. But in this case, we need to have that HTML, which is the core structure of it all. Each time you pull up a web page, it actually pulls up an HTML page. And then the HTML page pulls in CSS or pulls in JavaScript as needed. So you always have to have the HTML file. When you go to a website, for example, and you pull up that website, you'll notice that I don't have to type in HTML. The reason why is because as soon as you go to a website, it's actually looking for a file called index.html. That's the first file, so you don't have to specify index.html. If your first file, your main page is, is labeled index.html, no matter where you put it on a website, you don't have to type in that uh, HTML extension. If it was like page two, then I would have to type in page two.html in order to get to it. But the first page, again, is always just index.html. I go ahead and hit save there and you'll notice that index.html file is right inside of that folder. If I want to preview what this website looks like inside of a browser, all I have to do is double click on that file and you can see that it's pulled up my browser, but nothing's there yet because we really haven't put any content inside of there. All right, so going back into Sublime, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start typing in my HTML. If you're using Sublime, as soon as you type in an angle bracket here and start typing in HTML, it's going to prompt you with a code hint. And this code hint, basically, if I hit enter, will give me all of the default things that I need in order to create a basic website. 
So you'll notice in each of these, we have the first line is a doc type, and it says doc type HTML. The second line is a starting tag, and this, each HTML element needs to have a starting tag and a closing tag. Well, at least most of them. This one doesn't. But HTML, this is the starting tag. And you'll notice that the closing tag actually has this forward slash here and uh, is down at the bottom. So anything that is my HTML page needs to go in between this uh, starting page or the starting tag and this closing tag. Now, there's two other sections here. There's a head tag and then there is a body tag. Anything that I want to be inside that is not visible to the end user, then I place that inside of the head tag. So that's where I attach my CSS files. That's where I go ahead and add metadata in as well. Um, that's where I add the title for the page itself. I place that all inside of the head tag. Now, anything that I want to be visible on the page, I place that inside of the body tag. So I'm essentially adding children inside of the body tag. Anytime you see the starting tag there and a, head, a closing tag at the end there, and then there's elements in between those, that's basically the child of the parents. So, so it's a child of the head tag there. We're not going to get too deep into that right now, but I am going to come into add a couple lines here in the body tag, and I'm going to come in here into the title tag. And so I'm going to come back into my browser, and you'll notice up here, because I have two tabs open, this says index.html. I don't really want the end user to have that to be visible as part of their tab. So I'm going to come into Sublime, and I'm going to go ahead and call this home page. You can call it whatever you want, but now just by saving that, come up here and go File, Save, or Command S, or Control S, and now going into my web page, you'll notice that the label up here has changed. So updating the title tag has updated the tab inside of my browser. Now, if I want content to be visible inside of here, that's where I need to start adding elements or different tags inside of this body tag. Now, I'm not going to cover, or I'm going to, in several videos, cover different tags. But for now, we're only going to use two different types of tags. And so you always do the angle bracket and then go ahead and uh, start typing in whatever tag you want, the first letter. And I just want to use the P tag, which stands for paragraph. And I'm going to hit enter. Oh, let's go back in here. So I'm going to hit P and then hit enter. And then it creates that opening tag and then the closing tag for me. Now I'm going to just uh, call this welcome to my page and then hit save. As soon as I hit save, I can come back into my browser, hit refresh, and there's my text. Now this text, you don't see the opening tag uh, when it's inside of the browser. You don't see the closing tag when it's inside of the browser because the browser will actually go into the code and it will render it and show you uh, what it's supposed to look like based off of the default element style or the default styling of the different elements that you use. So just because I wrapped it inside of a paragraph tag, it's automatically added different styling for this browser itself. It doesn't look that great and we can overwrite it, but we overwrite it with CSS. So for now, I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to add one more tag. And that tag is going to be my H1 tag. As soon as I hit enter, now I can start typing in between those tags. You have to make sure your text is in between those tags. But I'm going to just start typing welcome page and hit save. So even though in Sublime, it basically looks the same. Uh, what will happen is when I hit refresh, it will render that text differently because I marked up this to be an H1 tag and I marked this up to be a paragraph tag. Markup is a key word. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And so essentially in HTML, we're marking up text, we're marking up different things, um, and we're creating the structure. Now, each of these HTML elements have a default, they have default styling. They have different default properties and values. That's why the H1 tag is bigger text and it's more bold as well because it has that default styling that gets applied just by me marking it up. You can override that styling with CSS, which we'll do in uh, future videos. But I at least wanted to show you how to get started, how to create like the folder structure as well as uh, creating some default HTML elements as well. We're going to go ahead and in future videos, we're going to talk about much more than this. We're going to talk about uh, how to structure, you know, different, how, how different tags, how to create parent tags and children tags. We're going to create CSS, uh, how to apply the CSS as well. So what I wanted to show you is once I actually have these files open, 
and I have a lot more of these properties or these different elements and properties and, and values and other things like that. It could get a little complex, but if you understand the basics, knowing that there's always an opening tag, there's always a closing tag, you use, depending on the tag that I use, it'll add different styling uh, and it will structure it in different ways as well. If you understand that, then you, and you're able to add the CSS and the JavaScript and everything like that, you're able to build pretty complex things inside of the browser. So that code that I just showed you essentially is this. And so we have our images, we have play buttons, we have you know pause buttons, we have menus on the left-hand side. And so there's a lot that you can do once you start understanding these core principles. And so that is just, this is just the beginning. If you want to check out more of these videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel or go to learningdojo.net. Follow me on Twitter, JeffBat01. And whenever I post these, you'll get notified. And uh, hopefully this will help you to learn uh, code and it'll help you to learn that this is within your reach. You're able to, to go in and develop these different types of interactions. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me as well, jeff at learningdojo.net. So hopefully you've liked this video. If you have any other uh, suggestions for videos, feel free to let me know as well.